five. Hi. Hey, thanks for coming over, Nora. Don't look like you slept too good last night. Uh, yeah, well, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep, no. You said there was some sort of problem or something, and it wasn't with Rachel, so what is it? Is it Sheila? No, no, Sheila's fine. In fact, she's, she's at church right now. So that'll give us the whole morning to talk this out. Talk this out? Whoa. This is beginning to sound more and more serious. Yeah. Well, look. Nora, I've got a problem with RJ. And it's... It's not gonna go away this time. last night. I can't talk about it, okay? Why can't you just respect that? Dad, can we sit in the front row? Yeah, why don't you get us three good seats, huh? Okay. for last night at Rody's. You're right. I haven't been making my meetings the way I should, and I, I definitely shouldn't be sitting with people playing cards, even if it's just for fun. Yeah, we kind of have to give things like that a wide berth. Yeah. Listen, there's a, there's a campus outreach meeting today, too, in the basement. Am I going to see you then? I'll try, definitely. Okay, good. Um, so, how's Luna? She's fine. She'll be here soon. What's wrong? Lynn, you better go to church without me this morning. Why, Sugar, what's the matter? Something happened last night. Um, Andrew gave me a ride home in a snowstorm. I thought that you two weren't going to see each other. I know. But the weather was so bad. <laughs> it seemed silly to uh, be afraid of a harmless... You dropped me off? Then, on his way down the road, he slipped off, and his car got stuck in the snow. When I was, while he was trying to get it out, he hurt his ankle, so he made his way back here. I bandaged him and got his wet clothes off of him. And he, he, he didn't. No. We wanted to. We almost did. But uh, finally we real realized that we couldn't. We looked at each other, and we knew it's never going to happen. It would never be right. Well, I think you need to hold on to that, and, and, and I think that you will... Yeah, well, just when we were working it out, Blair showed up. Yeah. She saw us together, and, and you can only imagine what she assumed. Yeah, when you told her that, that she wasn't interested in the truth. She couldn't wait to run to Cassie and tell her that Andrew and I were having an affair. She brought Cassie over here. And now, Luna... I don't know what Cassie's gonna do. Matthew Parker, he still has the flu, so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to do the mass. I thought that after the service, we could drive down to Tidewater. It'd mean a lot to me, my dad, Vicki. If uh, River's willing to go to sleep in the car seat, we could, we could talk about uh, what happened last night, Marty and everything. 
Come on, Cassie, please. Talk to me, please. Please, just hate me or, or forgive me, but don't, not, not this silence, anything but silence. Find a way to talk about this openly. What do you want me to say, Andrew? What you feel, your anger, your pain, your confusion. You know, I'm sorry. I wish I could make it easier for you. All I feel this morning is numb. I understand. I don't want you to make it easier for me. I just want, I want... Marty and I never slept together. Do you believe that? I don't know what I believe. Do you love her? Love? No, I don't love her. I love you. I am sorry for what happened. I would do anything to change what happened. I didn't want to cause you any pain. Please, blame me. Be angry with me. I wish I could be angry, Andrew. I wish I could throw something. Do it. I wish I could hit do you. it. I wish I could. Throw it. Do it. Hit me. I don't care. Come on. I can't. Because it won't change anything. There is no justification for what happened between Marty and me. I have no excuses. All I can say is that somewhere along the line, and I, I don't even know where, an attraction began. I thought I could control it. Attraction? I thought, attraction, yeah, what do you, do you want me to stand here and deny that? An attraction, they were feelings, Cassie. Feelings, I thought I could control them. Dude, are you trying to torture me by telling I, me all this? Is that easing your guilt? No. Cassie, Susan. please! Andrew, hurry up. You're going to be late. You don't yes, want to keep no. people... I am sorry. I'm so sorry. I know you are. We thought that Cassie was still down in Tidewater with Sloane and Vicky. Andrew had called and Jessica said she'd gone out shopping. As soon as he got his car towed out of the ditch, he was going to go home and keep calling her before Blair could track her down. Oh, don't tell me. With Blair's luck, she probably got to Cassie first, didn't she? Cassie came home unexpectedly. Yeah, I can just imagine how Blair phrased it. It hurts me more than it hurts you. I hate to be the one to have to tell you this. Oh, yeah, she hated it so much she had to drag Cassie all the way over here in a snowstorm to show it to herself. And it was terrible. Cassie asked us if what Blair had said were true. Yes or no? Had we embraced one another in the park? Why'd you tell her? And, and then she wanted to know if we'd embraced here. Again, last night. Well, well what did you tell her? The truth. That we had embraced. We didn't sleep together. Well, did she believe you? I don't know. She just turned around without a word, left with Andrew. I've been sitting here all night. I don't know how many times I tried to pick up the phone and call the rectory. Oh, God. honey, please don't do that. I know. Luna, part of me is just desperate to know what's going on. And the other part is so terrified of, of causing Cassie any more pain. Going to church? Well, Cassie's got to go. So does Andrew. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit here and feel guilty? And look guilty? I think the best thing for you to do is go to church with me this morning. I think you need to face the situation head on. It's the only way. What you got on you, Hank? Plenty, Nora. He could hurt me real bad. What's your brother blackmailing you with? Something that happened a long time ago. I've known you for a long time, Hank Gannon, since college. He knows something I don't. Yeah, yeah, because I never told you. As a matter of fact, it happened right after we were married. Uh, well, you couldn't tell me then. Whatever it was, you can certainly tell me now. Well, I hope so, Nora. Because like it or not, 
You're about to hear something that may change your mind about the man you used to live with. This dress is definitely dangerous. No matter what your favorite look. It, uh, it looks like, uh... Help keep that look by including Kellogg's Special K. Great toasted taste, 110 calories, and fat-free. I like what I'm seeing. When we were at Midwestern U, you remember the break-in at the president's office? Yeah, who could forget it? For goodness sake, a guard was shot in cold blood. The whole university was up in arms. There were protests and demonstrations and counter-demonstrations. You know, the case was never solved. Yeah, well, I, I know who was responsible. It was the Warriors. The Black Radicals? Oh, now how do you know that? Because I was a member. Now look, I, I, I know you're thinking that we were just married and I should have told you everything, but the Warriors had a strict rule of silence. And I, we couldn't tell anyone, not even... Not uh, even their wives happened to be white. It wouldn't have matter what color you were. I had to respect their rules. So I thought. You were a warrior? Gee, I only thought you left the library to go play football. I... Yeah. Well, I thought we were working to change the system. You see, we, we learned that this university president had compiled a, a secret list of so-called dangerous black radicals on campus, and he was turning this list over to his federal agents. And we felt we had a right to know what names were on that list. Well, yeah, and now, by law, you have that right. Yeah, but not then, Nora. So, anyway, a half an hour after the break-in, well, this guard shows up. And you know the rest, and so does R.J. Oh, well, if you couldn't tell me anything, I mean, how is R.J. supposed to know you He found him? out from a cellmate in Joliet Prison. One of the warriors. And it was just a damn fluke, and that's why R.J. came to Landview. He's got proof that I was in the president's office that night. And he is, well, he's threatening to use it. I'm sorry, this is like, you're telling me about some man I don't even know, Hank. God, why did, you, why did you keep this from me? We were married, for God's sake. We had a daughter. We, we even became friends after the divorce. How could you keep this from me? That was a lovely way to say good morning. Oh, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> oh, my darling. I cannot tell you how much I've missed this. <laughs> Lying here, you in my arms, feeling so completely satisfied. I missed it, too. We can be together whenever we want now, no matter what anyone says. Darling, last night you reacted very emotionally when we were down in Tidewater, and I really loved you so much for defending me the way you did to your mother, but you know, in time when you think about it... There's nothing to think about, Dorian. You went down there to apologize to her. It took a lot for you to do that, but you did it. I'm no saint. I did it for you because you asked me to. That's not the point. The point is, she... She just threw it back in your face. I mean... I always thought she was so generous, you know? She's always... almost too understanding. Mm. It's like she's a different person with you. She's... <laughs> cruel and unforgiving. Vindictive. Vicky and I have always brought out the worst in each other, yes. Maybe I've just seen her for what she really is. I mean, she always thinks she's right. Everyone else is wrong. I'll never forget the way she treated you. I hope you can forgive her. I don't know. 
All I know is that I'm never going back to her house again. calling you a thousand times last night. Well, I'm glad you didn't because I went to bed early. You're angry with me. No, no, I'm not angry. Yes, you are, Cassie. I just, I couldn't sleep. I felt so terrible. I, I just thought, well, I, I shouldn't have told you about Marty and Andrew, and then I certainly should have taken you over there to our house to show you. Blair, Blair, I'm not angry. What you did last night, you felt you had to do. Whether that was right or wrong, that's something you're going to have to decide for yourself. But for now, I just need you to leave me alone. But, but Kathy, I... Uh, excuse me, dear. We couldn't help overhearing. Is there some problem in the Carpenter household? You shouldn't... eavesdrop, Mrs. McNamara. I don't eavesdrop, Mr. Uh. Daimler. I'm chairman of the vestry now, and any problem that the Carpenters have, the church has. Oh, Cassie looks dreadful. If Marty Saybrook is up to her old tricks again... Did I say that? Did I say anything like that? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, you did. You said that you were sorry that you told her about Marty and Andrew. Yes, and we've certainly been down this unpleasant road I do road believe the that the service door. is about to begin, ladies. You thinking what I'm thinking? Mm. Where there's smoke, there's a smoking gun. <sighs> Erica Kane, one extraordinary woman 25 outrageous years. Erica sailed through marriage after marriage getting exactly what she wanted. And when she was married to Tom, there was one thing she didn't want. Kids. Do you remember how he found that out? Centrum? I just feel better knowing I'm taking it. Centrum's complete. Every time a vitamin makes news, I check my Centrum label, and Centrum's got it. It's Centrum's commitment to ongoing research that ensures you always get the best nutritional support. A more advanced multivitamin. Centrum. Come on, Nardy, you think I wanted to keep it from you, huh? Well, when I found out that guard was killed, I wanted to tell you everything. But you didn't. Look, I mean, as time went by, it just got a lot easier to push the memory into the back of my mind. And, and the guilt was so hard to deal with. I, I don't know, I mean, I was just so, so damn ambitious and so convinced that I could change the world. And I just told myself that it would be a waste of everything that I'd accomplish if I came forward with the truth. For God's sake, Hank. You're an accessory to the murder of that guard, and you've been covering it up for decades. Well, look, look, is that what you think, Nora? Like, that's exactly why I kept it a secret, because people were bound to think the worst. Well, you said you were there that night. Because I felt that we had a right. No, I felt that we had a right to know if our names were on this enemy's list because our skin was black and we were political. Look, when we got into the president's office that night, I mean, look, things went haywire. I mean, some of the hotheads, they, they started breaking into some of the other files and started trashing the place. And when I told them to stop, well, they started shouting me down and calling me all kinds of trash. So when I, when I knew I couldn't control it, I left. Hell, I didn't even know that we were in trouble until this kid, one of the brothers, Danny Keller, he came over to the apartment in a cold sweat. You were at your folks. And he told me that the guard was dead. And that I had better keep my mouth shut if I knew what was good for me and for you. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You left the president's office before that guard was killed? Baby, I was long gone. Well, excuse me for offering up legal counsel to the district attorney for Lantano County, but... You can't possibly be an accessory to murder if you left before the killing took place. Fine, fine, Nora, I know that. But R.J. has a copy of the surveillance tape that places me in the president's office that night. All right, just wait a minute. First of all, how in the world did R.J. get a tape? Second of all, on what difference does it make if the tape proves 
that you were leaving, that you left before the murder occurred. Yeah, but not after he doctored the tape. Oh, my God. Yeah. Plus, Danny Keller wound up in Joliet prison. Oh, don't tell me, sharing a cell with R.J.? Cell buck, at least. And from what I can gather, well, R.J., well, he did a couple of good turns for Danny while he was in the joint. And so, if it comes out and they trace it to Danny, well, he's willing to testify that I was still in the room when the guard was shot. And that you're an accessory. Yeah. I'm scared, Nora. I mean, this is the first time, the first time in a long time that I've felt this kind of fear. And not because of myself anymore, but there's Sheila and there's Sage. Yeah. And it would break her heart if she saw me going down. Yeah, and RJ knows that. He can't be your brother. He had to be switched at birth. RJ's got to be stopped. For Rachel's sake. Yeah, well, don't you worry about that. I'm way ahead of you. Relax. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Okay? You're a big girl. You don't need me telling you what to do. But that doesn't mean I'm not available if something goes wrong and you do need me. You hear me? Family gathered in a family pew, bright Sunday morning, to worship and reflect. Honey, flash that uh, ring around. I paid enough for it. it. Gives new meaning to the word piety, doesn't it? Yeah, he probably figures that the Sermon on the Mount was something Roy Rogers said to trigger. <laughs> well, if it isn't Landy's first family. Peace and love, y'all. R.J. Gannon in church. <laughs> well, everybody has to be someplace. Besides, I was born again in prison. I think once was enough in your case. More <laughs> relax. Gannon, I want you to remember, I'm always watching you. So keep your hand out of the collection plate. Can you believe this guy? Wait, you're not on duty. Relax. Is tomorrow okay for you? Are you talking to me? You said to contact you about making my business proposal. Buying Olenovs. I told you. If you had something to put on the table that was on the up and up, you'd make an appointment. You call my office, have my secretary arrange it. Don't you ever come to my house. And don't you ever bother my wife and me in a Lord's house of worship. Huh? Don't tell me. Nothing's going on. Something's going on. Do you really think that Andrew and Marty Saybrook are involved romantically? Well, I hate to dredge up old stories, but there have been rumors about those two since before he married Cassie. And then they took her into their home, into the rectory, no less. Of course, that ended rather suddenly, didn't it? But she was a troubled young woman then. She's changed. Oh, has she just? I don't claim to know Marty all that well, but I do know Andrew, and I know he would never do anything to hurt his wife. Never. Well, I sincerely hope you're right, Virginia. This church has certainly had enough scandal from Andrew Carpenter, if you ask me. But if our rector has a sordid affair, well, God may forgive the man, but I won't. All right, just take a deep breath, hold your head high, and put one foot in front of the other. You you go on, Luna. I need a second just to get myself together. All right, honey. All right, but remember something. You're stronger than you think.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us take a moment for silent prayer. Tell me if I'm too rough. Impossible. <laughs> so, did you mean what you said about never going back to live at Landfair? Well, not if my mom can't accept us. And that means accepting your apology. I mean, if she can't do that... Hmm. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask if I can move in here with you. That wasn't what I was thinking. Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Not. <laughs> I'm gonna get my own place on campus. I, I want to be out there, you know, on my own, making my own decisions, not having to answer to anybody. Does that include me? Whenever you call, I'll answer. Hmm. So, um, what's your next step? Gonna find a room? Uh, actually, my next step is going to be talking to my dad. Joe, are you sure you want to do that? We both know how your father feels about us. Well, you were willing to talk to my mom, right? And you didn't just apologize to her for what happened on her wedding day. You were upfront about your feelings for me. Now, I've got to be just as honest with my dad. And the longer I wait, the harder it's going to be. So, wish me luck. You can't be serious. Look, Norris, the only way to beat R.J. at his blackmail game. And before he gets a chance to use any evidence, I'll go to the authorities and I'll turn myself in. Do you know what they could do to you? <sighs> Look, I'm willing to take the consequences. I mean, since I'll have the best attorney I know defending me, that is if you'll take the case. Wait, you want some legal advice here? I'll tell you, why don't you just calm down and you think about your options before you start throwing yourself to the wolves? Well, Nor there is no other option. Now, my brother's getting greedy by the minute. But you see that African mask you gave me? Guess who wants to borrow it on a permanent basis? I mean, and I don't know why. For some reason, he, he wants that mask in the worst way. And who knows what he'll want next? You're right. It's envy. He wants every little piece of you he can get. Yeah. And that's why I've got to stop him now, Nora. Giving in to him will only make him worse. Look, he will chew me up if I let him. Being R.J. doesn't mean sacrificing yourself. You were so close to state office. You know that, Hank. Oh, come on, Nora. I thought about this thing, all right? And there is no other way. All right, who's the best trial attorney you know? Huh? So why don't you just shut up and listen? You left the president's office before that guard was killed, and you tried to stop those other kids from doing what they were doing and leave. But I was there when we broke in. It doesn't matter. That statute of limitations has run out on that crime long time ago. All R.J. has is a testimony of an inmate from Joliet Prison and a videotape that shows that you were there in the president's office before the guard was killed. All we have to do is prove that you left before the guard was killed. Oh, man. I mean, why didn't I think of this before? But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. I know and I'm convinced of the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. I'll be right back. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. 
Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for who Christ has died. R.J., I wouldn't need that much, just enough to take me to a few games. Look, look, my husband's keeping me on a really short leash, but, but I could pay you back in a couple of days. Ellen, this is a church. I know, but if you could just... And I'm running late. Look, if I don't call Chicago in the next ten minutes, I'm going to be very annoyed with whoever held me up. Do you hear what I'm saying? Thank you. Helen, what are you doing? Every knee will bow to me. Every tongue will confess to God. Every tongue will confess to God. And I can't help thinking, what will I confess? What will I say to God? Will I be able to say, I've loved enough, that I've given enough, that I've believed enough? What will I tell God? But all of us have unique gifts, unique gifts of love and hope and faith. And, and there are those among us who are an inspiration to me, the way they use their individual gifts. Luna Moody, we know the kind of obstacles you've come through. You did that with loving faith, the help of your family. And now you're back where you belong. Helping others work through their weaknesses, their problems. 1020 on the radio dial. <laughs> Luna's loving. Another woman over at Landview Hospital who puts in way too many hours for too little pay. A woman who's there to help us whenever we need help. Sheila Price, I'm talking about you. We know the obstacles you've come through, the obstacles put in your path because of race or gender or just just plain, uncompromising honesty, but you never, ever forgot your calling, which is to help, to heal. One more person I need to mention, a person who's here every Sunday, a person who I've come to cherish in a very personal, very selfish way. My wife, Cassie. I didn't think I... It's the only thing that makes sense, Nora. RJ got a doctored version of the videotape that makes it impossible for me to prove that I'm innocent. But all I've got to do is find the original videotape. Oh, will you sit and think for two seconds here? RJ isn't stupid. He's obviously destroyed the original tape. Yeah, well, that would be the smart thing to do. But you see, RJ's got this fatal weakness. He likes to keep things around that he can put his hands on, you know, tangible things, you know, to prove how how brilliant he is because he stole them or because he blackmailed for them. You see, he loves to hide things, Nora. Always did. And I'm telling you, R.J.'s got that tape somewhere. Yeah, that could be from anywhere from here to Chicago. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Chicago, Aunt Clara. Excuse me. Aunt Clara. She's got this big old house. R.J. used to love to go there. I mean, he had this favorite spot where he would, uh, under the floorboards, where he would just hide things. All kinds of stuff that he would steal from the neighborhood. Oh, he was a sweetheart even then, wasn't he? Yeah. But knowing R.J., that's as good a place as any to start looking. But there's one catch. I've got to be in court every day for the next few weeks. There's no way I can make it to Chicago. Maybe not. But I can. I don't know what it is about Sunday mornings, but they make me feel so amorous. Mm. Has this always been the case? No, just since you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. I can't stay. I can't. Oh, darling. I have to get to the church. I want to catch my dad right after it's over and... I really want to talk to him today. I, I wish I could go with you to give you a shoulder to lean on. Hey, you want to help? Go to your living room 
and pick out a spot for a Christmas tree. And when I get back, we'll drive out to Schultz's farm and we'll pick out a giant fir. That's so romantic. Well, you always said how buying a Christmas tree and decorating it alone always made you so sad. So, from this Christmas on, you'll never have to string on the lights alone. Let's not even think about Christmas's future, all right? This holiday, this moment with you, it's more than enough. And no matter what happens, will you always remember what a wonderful, wonderful, gentle, good, 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 good man you are? Mm. I'm not that good. You're very good. I'm all right. You're... <laughs> you are good. You're very good. Joe, I'm not really. All those things you've heard people say about me, the horrible deeds I've supposedly committed. Some of them I have. I don't care. And I'm not gonna worry about the future. You're right. Today is enough for me. As long as I have you. The sooner you go, the sooner you can come back. Go. <laughs> Ocean. Cassie, you have so many gifts. Not only are you a loving wife and mother, but the way you help out in all the church programs. I've seen you reach out to a lonely child and help a homeless man, an AIDS victim. But your greatest gift is that when you look at somebody, you see them for who they are. You are the most loving, compassionate, caring person I know. I love you. I love you more than I could ever express in words. So to all our shining stars, let us pray that they lead us out of darkness and into a new day of hope. Amen. Amen. Look, Nora. I can't let you do this. Well, why not? Somebody's got to go to Chicago, and it might as well be me. I certainly can do it. I can certainly know my way around, and I can sweet-talk my way into Aunt Clara's house. And meanwhile, you stick out like a like white rice on a plate of black beans. Oh. And don't forget, R.J. still has friends in the old neighborhood. Fine. I'll talk to them, too. Yeah? Mm hmm And what if R.J. finds out? What? Think I'm scared of him? Well, maybe you should be. You think he's going to stop at just destroying you, Hank? No. He's going to keep going until he destroys everyone you care about. And that includes our daughter, Rachel. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, listen. I know it was one thing for him to come after me. <laughs> but I guess the man made a serious mistake when he, um, when he crossed Mama. Huh? Yeah, you bet your life. Before I let him destroy any of my family, I will stop him somehow. Come on, Ellen. It's not the end of the world. Tell me, are you gambling again? No. Oh, God, Max, I want to. Last night, I dreamt about it. Ellen, and... Ellen, just because you dream about jumping off a building doesn't mean you're gonna do it, okay? Now, where does R.J. Gannon fit into all this? I was hoping he'd loan me some money. Oh, some... for crying out loud, Ellen, he's a loan shark. I know that, I know. But my husband doesn't give me cash to buy groceries anymore. I can't even pick up the cleaning. I have to go over to Jack's service station on Bowman Avenue just so I can sign for my gas. Come talk to me. What's left to say? My husband doesn't trust me. He treats me like a total failure. So, what, you gonna prove him right by gambling? Hmm? Ellen, how long have you been with the program? 
celebrated a year last month. Max, what can I say? It just never gets any easier. The itch is still there. Isn't that true for you, too? Next, will Damien be willing to share the family business with Sonny? Find out on General Hospital following an ABC News Brief.